Okay guys, so this is uh, more ongoing videos on the Rumi Q Wizard. And today I'm gonna to talk about minor adjustments you can make to improve your overall response. And um, there's a couple of things I'm gonna talk about. Uh, the first one I'm gonna talk about is distance. Now, uh, I've had some people question me about changing the distance on the subwoofer. And essentially, what we're talking about here is let's get into the AVR speakers manual go down to the distances. All right, now this is uh, set up to where I like it, which is four feet added to the subwoofers. Now, before subwoofer one was at uh, 11.4 and subwoofer two was at 12.4. So I added four feet to each of them. And, but I'm gonna show you some results of what I got initially. And initially the way it measured out is right here. Now, this is a better looking graph, um, sort of. I mean, I've got some problems here, and I think that has to do with running um, two different sized subwoofers. Again, I'm running the PB2000 with the PB16 Ultra. And uh, I don't normally have a dip in the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the 60 hertz range like that. Uh, in fact, let me see, which one is it? Yeah, this was my initial measurement here. Uh, that I took with you guys while you were watching that other video. So as you can see, uh, I did not have that dip right there. Uh, this was the first measurement I took. And then after calibration, this is what it looks like. So I think that this has to do with running subs of different sizes. Now, uh, what I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna show you how I fix this in here uh, in a minute, but that gives you an idea. I, I, I have that there. It shouldn't be there. Um, so that's one thing. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is changing the distance. Now, with the distance settings, um, I started and I just added one foot of dif distance and measured. Okay? Added one foot. Added one foot. Okay? So as you can see, it dramatically changes the graph as you get you know, above the 80 hertz range. Uh, and so you'll, so we go from this all the way down to four uh, feet, which is where I can like it. Now, we'll go ahead and take these others away and see what happens when you just change the distance four feet. You can see that in here, I've got a lot more bass response in the upper range, in the 100 hertz range, 80, 90 hertz. It's just doing a little bit better. It's a little flatter looking graph. You know, we can take this graph out. That doesn't look so bad, except for that dip at 60 hertz. Uh, 60 and 60 hertz, that's that's not a good looking dip. Um, but other than that, you can see that I gained some response, uh, you know, once we got above the 80 to 90 hertz range. It just looks a little flatter. There's, there's fewer dips, uh, and the dips that are there are smaller. So that's kind of what you're going for. That's why I even messed around with changing the distances. And then you can go down here and look at what happens when I add five feet. Okay, looks pretty good still. Uh, and then, let's see, I think this is six feet, yep. Yeah. So there's six feet. Now look what happens at six feet. You get these big old dips right over in here. Uh, there's a big old dip at 125 and an even bigger dip at 141. So. You know, there, there's there's a limit. There's a there's a sweet spot to adjusting the distance. For me, I think it's four feet in addition to whatever your AVR sets your subwoofers at. But you know, again, measuring for yourself will really tell you the tale. All right, so we'll go back now. Okay, so I've got the distance set up to where I want it. So that's one tweak. You you increase the distance a little bit. I think what it does is it shifts uh, the phase of the subs just a little bit, shifts the timing so that you get less interference with your mains because your mains are putting out bass and so is your sub. So if you kind of shift them so where they're not uh, colliding as much and canceling each other out, you get a better looking graph. And that's, you know, again, that's where we started, kind of a choppy looking graph and this is a little better looking. All right, so now we've got this issue. Now, again, I think it has to do with having subs of different sizes. Normally, I've got more of a dip like towards a 75 hertz range, but this is a little bit different. So I got to playing around with some things, and this is where 
the PB16 Ultra really shines as far as what you can do with it. A lot of people will say, well, you know, it's not an auto calibration. It's just manual. You can only go in and make manual adjustments. Well, yeah, uh, it's, you know, you're, you're, you've already got, chances are if you're running something like a PB16 Ultra, uh, you've already got an amplifier or, or a, a preamp or some sort of processor that's already capable of doing all of your auto EQ, okay? But what I'm concerned about in this particular situation is fixing this little bump uh, in, in this little this little dip here. All right, so uh, I wanted to try different things. Uh, let's see, let me find the one I wanted to get to here. Okay, so your natural instinct, okay, right here is 63 hertz, roughly. Okay, so let's add some boost to 63 hertz. And what I did is I got on here on the SVS app and just used the, the uh, PEQs on there. And so I identified these different settings and I made the adjustment on just the, the PB16 alone. Uh, so the PB2000 doesn't have this adjustment. And so what happens when we add boost? Uh, and we add, uh, you know, say two, uh, I added just a, a couple of, uh, you know, like 2.3 worth of boost. It didn't fix nothing. I mean, it's, you know, it's mildly better, but it, it looks almost the same. There's, there's really no change. Okay. So that didn't work. So what happened is I decided to go and add more. Let's see what happens when we add more. It kind of actually made the problem worse. I mean, you know, this uh, this is where we were before, or this is where we are after adding boost, and this is where we were before. So it really, no net effect change. Let me make this, maximize this here. Okay, that's a little better. All right, so we got nothing out of that. All right, so now I kind of already showed you what I did here, but I'm gonna show you a little bit more in depth um, what I did was instead of adding boost, I figured, okay, that's probably a cancellation. What if I remove the PB16 Ultra output at those frequencies? Bingo. All right, we lost a little bit up here right around, you know, uh, the 50, 54 hertz range, but in reality, we've got a much flatter looking graph. Okay, the, a little bump is okay, that's not so good, but that bump is a lot more acceptable. And the way I did that, again, was uh, this is, let's see, uh, there's PEQ1, and PEQ1, I've got it at 64 hertz, and I've got the boost at negative 12, so I'm taking it way down. You can see that dip there. And I've got the Q factor way up because I want the Q, uh, I, want, I want it to affect a very narrow range. Now, if I was going real wide range, uh, let's see if I can get it to work here. My real wide range is be a big old dip there, and I don't want that. I just want to focus on, okay, my phone stinks. All right, I wanted to focus on one particular area. And I did that and improved it a little bit, but then I still had a little bump there, so I went to 56 hertz and only took it down negative uh, 6 dB and still a Q factor of 10 because I'm trying. I'm doing some precision stuff here. And so that is what you can do with the PB16 Ultra. Uh, it's very versatile. And this is just, I mean, I, I don't have any lights on or anything. I just put this up because I just was kind of messing around, discovered this and wanted to make a video on it. Um, so that's the kind of thing you can do when you can adjust the PEQ like that. Now, of course, you can use, you know, any sort of, um, you know, like the DSP 2x4 will do the same type of thing. Um, but then again, being able to adjust it on the fly like this and just take a quick measurement, uh, you know, it really helps. And so, you know, it's, it, it's, um, it's nice to be able to have such control over your EQ so quickly. Uh, you can really just go through it and find everything and just make these little adjustments. And again, you know, this is why I'm, you know, pretty, uh, pretty serious about wanting to have two matching subs uh, because again, normally I don't get that drop out there. That's, that's a unique thing uh, for me so far. 
Uh, so it, having the same subs really makes a difference. That's the first time I've seen that kind of dip with using dual subs. Usually it's closer to the crossover point. But just being able to have that and being able to make those adjustments and realizing too that, you know, you don't want to boost a null. You know, when you've got, excuse me, when you've got, well, let's, let's do this even better. Let's see, where was that? I think it was here. I know it was here. I had a big old dip. Where was it? There it was. Okay, so like on this. The last thing you want to do, all right, I mean, this is kind of high in the range anyway. You're not going to use your sub to, to adjust this necessarily, but right here, this big old drop off, uh, you don't want to try and boost that. It's not going to work. If you boost a null, you're going to increase the amount of power your speakers put, your subwoofers put out, but it's not going to overcome that null. That's what I showed you before when I tried to boost it. It just didn't work. But if you take it away, that might solve the problem, uh, just at that particular frequency. So it's kind of different. Uh, I didn't expect that. It was something I was just kind of messing around with. I haven't, you know, really done manually queuing like this before uh, until I got to messing around with the PB16 Ultra. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, I've, you know, I was really surprised at, at how this turned out. Um, but being able to mess around with it and try these different things uh, really helped out. So, uh, so those are the, the tips there. Don't boost a null. Uh, try adding some distance to your sub. And if you've got the, uh, you know, the Room EQ Wizard, and you're able to take these measurements, find out what the best setting is. Adding or maybe even subtracting distance. You know, see what sounds best to you. I, I've kind of gone through it, and for me, really finding that the, you know, the plus four uh, in the distance setting really kind of made the difference for me. That was right where I was happy. Um, but mess around with it. And then when you have these these issues with uh, cancellations, maybe try taking some of the uh, output out of one sub or another. Uh, and that's another thing too, is I had another, I tried to take it out at 90 or 88, and it did nothing for me, which tells me if I had the other sub, maybe I might have been able to take it out of that and have it work. So, you know, it's 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 a lot of experimentation and just kind of messing around with stuff. Um, but anyway, guys, I just want to talk about that. Um, it was kind of a, a neat little thing. I, I just messing around with this stuff. Uh, I did get everything EQ'd uh, together, you know, the, the PB16 with the PB2000 uh, and, you know, use the, the Ruby Q, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the room calibration with the Denon. And uh, it did a pretty good job. I mean, that's a nice flat looking graph. So uh, we just had that little bit of cancellation. Use the PEQs on the PB16 Ultra to care of that. Um, so, and I'm gonna be, you know, delving into the, P the uh, PB16 Ultra a lot more in terms of, you know, using the different uh, tuning frequencies, uh, using the different, you know, like movie modes, uh, all that stuff. So I'm gonna be getting into that um, more in future videos. But anyway, guys, I just want to put this out and thanks for watching and please subscribe.